83 meter Here Comes the Sun was launched by Amels in the Netherlands in 2016 with exterior design by Tim Hayward and interior styling by Winch Design. At the time, she was the largest yacht ever built by Amels. And guess what? She still is. After the yacht returned to Vlissingen and the yard where she was built for a massive one-year refit, during which time, apart from other major modifications, her hull was lengthened by six meters to 89 meters. <laughs> I was skiing at the time. Were you? <laughs> yeah, and he phoned and said, where are you? He said, I'm skiing. Ah, stop skiing, go to Miami, I've got a boat. <laughs> <laughs> and we're aboard the yacht now here in the Monaco Yacht Show to find out more about that refit operation in the company of two very expert guides, her captain, Colin Boyle, and Darman refit manager, Sander Peters. Why did the new owner decide to refit Here Comes the Sun? What did he want which the boat didn't have at the time? We'd been looking at everything available on the market for the previous six months, uh, and everything we looked at was with a view to refit. Uh, he's got a very specific list, or the family have a very specific list of facilities and, and uh, the look of the boat, the visuals of the boat. Um, and he's always looking to achieve that uh, in the shortest possible possible time. Um, Here Comes the Sun was uh, one of his prime choices for going through this process uh, and we managed to uh, to get it over the line. So it was always a case of refitting rather than building new because of the time factor? Yeah, uh, we had an immediacy, we had an immediate need for something big and prominent uh, to take the family yachting again. So um, yeah, refit was the way forward for us. Big and prominent, I like that. I put the first cut in the book with an angle grinder, which, uh, <laughs> which was uh, <laughs> ceremonial, they said. <laughs> so it's around here, is it, somewhere? Yeah, the first cut went pretty much in line with uh, this stanchion here. Right, so we're on the, on the main deck aft. Here, somewhere here. Okay. Round Just in front of that hatch, between the hatch and the swimming pool, that should be okay. Uh, yep. The first cutting line. Uh, another six meters. How many more frames? Oh, <laughs> there you are. 54 divided by six. 54 divided by six. <laughs> what? Nine. <laughs> Nine. Nine frames went in yeah. here and one went in the swim platform. Okay. So, okay. We, so we could fit a lounger on it. It sounded that the, the captain and the owner decided to return to Lissingen where the boat was built. You knew the boat already because she was built there. Did that make your job as project manager easier? Yes, it made it easier for us because we had the, the drawing package, etc. cetera. Uh, so we know the layout of the boat, etc., cetera, et cetera. So then it's always easier to adapt to this, et cetera. You know where the piping is. It took somewhat longer than, uh, than expected, but the time planning in the first instance was so tight, so. Mm -hmm. The owner wanted a pool you could probably dive into. Mm -hmm. um, it's got an endless swimming jet against, against it. Um, and something that the whole family could get into at once. <laughs> and you were talking before about uh, alteration to the bulwark here and the, and the cap rails. Yeah, right. so we dropped the bulwark by 450 mil, um, the steel bulwark, to bring more light into this area. Mm -hmm. uh, and all the way down to the gate to bring more light into the salon. Mm -hmm. What sort of capacity does it have, Colin? It's 40, you know how many liters in there? 46 tons. Yeah, the pool's heated off the excess generator heat uh, cooling water. Right. Beach club. The owners and the, the whole family enjoy the development of the boat also whilst they're on board. You know, we've spent a lot of the summer buying bits of furniture, buying bits of art, putting new, getting new toys on board, new tenders. Let's see if that works. Um, there's almost no end to this mission. It's a process. And that's one of the most fantastic things about it. We've got sauna, steam and plunge pool on this side. Mm -hmm. And access through to the tender garage. Mm -hmm. Steam room. I love that, 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 that woody smell of saunas. 
sport boat for wakeboarding, water skiing and what have you. And there's another rib on the outside. I think the captain said this is a 12 meter limo tender. And then a new hairdressing and massage spa on the port okay. side. All new. All new. Yep. And were any attempts made to, to recycle any of the original materials? Yeah. We've reused Saharan gold marble where on we the could. Mm -hmm. um, some of the furniture, the tables are original from the winch design uh, team. Um, yeah, where possible and maintain the character uh, of, the, of the original build. No, maybe it's good to say that we reused uh, the, a part of the transom section. So, for example, the transom door is reused. This is the transom door. Yeah. So right. this closes. And what do we have underneath? A recess with the uh, teak. Okay. okay. But this is actually the original transom door. Yeah. Okay, well, that's cool as well. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. And that sort of detail matches. I have to have this. Of course you do. But I didn't have to have that. So now, now we've made it disappear. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Very talented artist. She is fantastic. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to know from both of you what was the most challenging part of, of, or perhaps the most rewarding part of the refit process because you're coming at it from quite different views, from the shipyard's point of view and from the owner's point of view. It's daunting to, to see the boat go so far backwards uh, in what was a nine month time schedule. I mean, the, the pieces of steel we cut off this boat, like the entire back end and the sun deck, it was daunting to see to these think, what have I done? chunks <laughs> coming off. Uh, for me, I would say it is how she, she came out, how the yacht came out. Uh, the difference is, I think, major uh, in regards to, to how uh, the yacht looked before and how the yacht, uh, yacht look, looks now. It's just, I think it's a lot better. Um, yeah, we're very proud of it, that our flagship, let's say. We had a need for two additional VIP cabins, matching VIP cabins. So the galley and the lounge went. We reduced the deck length and increased the superstructure back to form the cabins. And you added some balconies, I believe. Yes, uh, we did. Yep. <laughs> which we can quite <laughs> which we can which you can see here. Yep. Come around the corner. There you go. The bubble balconies. The bubble ba balconies. <laughs> <laughs> Originally penned at six meters long, and the owner would look at the drawings. No, we need these larger. <laughs> and they were eight meters, and they were up to just over twelve meters. Just over yeah. twelve meters. Yeah. And again, amazing that they they actually looked like they were always there, supposed to be there. Yeah. Which is also thanks to to you guys. Let's go and have a look at the cabin, can we? Yes. Yeah. Oh wow. Okay, and uh, they actually face out onto the V balconies yep. as well. I wasn't expecting something like this for some reason. This is <laughs> well, this is gorgeous, and we haven't seen the rest of the boat. But uh, with regard to the uh, interior, originally by Andrew Winch, has the interior remained the same? Has it been upgraded, modified in any way? Uh, the instruction was to maintain the character of the interior of the boat. So we've done everything in that style. Perhaps quite a bit lighter, um, just with a with a different approach to ceiling fabrics and soft soft furnishings. Uh, the owner's vision of, I mean, his idea of luxury if he uses a, a hotel room in Miami or somewhere is really to have a walk around bed and prefer a bit of water view. Well, I'd certainly have a sea view. The last two percent or five percent is the hardest bit, and that often involves the paint job. Are you happy with the paint job, Colin? Yeah, we're extremely happy with the paint job. Um, one of the difficulties is you don't really get to see the whole thing till the last couple of days before it comes out the shed. It's the public face of the boat, isn't it? It's yes. what people seem to start with. And if you get that wow in their head from a distance, then the next steps are easy. So here we are on the sun deck. Mm -hmm. uh, we length lengthened the sun deck uh, to keep the diagonal line of the ship. Yep. So the decks actually are now in line mm -hmm. and it also allowed us uh, to make it a dutch and go pad because you have a helipad also in the bow don't you uh yep on the front deck on, on, on owner's deck, deck front side yep. okay yeah yep. we had to increase payload forward to take a bell 49 or an ec 145 
uh, and we designed this uh, for that sort of payload also. Very Tim Hayward. Yeah, yourself. you're correct. Very yeah. Tim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, actually, just not. on steroids. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but on the inside, actually has. Uh, kind of a purpose as well. It's not just a styling feature, so you're not in full sun. It's used a lot. I'm sure it is, it's very cozy. Find people come curled up there. There was a significant upgrade here. This this used to be a, a side, uh, bed, <laughs> side bedroom uh, mm -hmm. for the master suite. Now it's the owner's waiting lounge in his office and we knocked this corridor through mm -hmm. to produce uh, a bit more of a flow, mm. uh, which has worked out well. What are the, the challenges uh, associated uh, with refitting which aren't there when you build new? You have to be realistic in the expectations. Uh, you know, there would come a, a point where it was financially viable to build new. Of course, we we're compressing it a time slot rather than a financial uh, limit. Um, just to main, maintain some sort of reality as to what we can turn this into, what changes can be made. Yeah, I think that's a, that's a big part of, of, of the challenge too. Let's set, set the expectations before you start to build, because that's normally, let's say, eases the process uh, and makes it easier to work with each other. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, the client knows exactly what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, and often, of course, with refits, uh, you start with a certain scope and the scope increases exponentially because along the way there are other stuff or the owner changes his mind or and there are all, all kinds of things that uh, that can happen but uh, yeah normally looking at this boat i think we had almost 100 change orders so that that's quite some uh, variations to contract uh, i would say 100 change orders <laughs> ah yeah dissertation <laughs> <laughs> and is the pool table stabilized no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yes. If it was stabilized, the owner would lose. <laughs> <laughs> That's going into the video, by the way. Yeah. <laughs>